Hello, everyone. Nice to see you through the screen. I'm Xiao Yu. Just graduated from Shenzhen Middle School this June, and I'm currently studying math at the University of Oxford. I have an uncommon hobby: scuba diving. Yes, I am one of those cool guys who carry air tanks and dive deep into the sea. I guess not everyone has the experience of being immersed in the sea for an hour, and maybe imagine yourself to be a fish swimming around, maybe going back to a place after seven seconds and wonder, have I ever been here before? <laughs> well, I think as human beings living on the earth, where seventy-one percent is covered by the sea, maybe we want to know what life in the other part of the world is like. Therefore, I want to make use of this precious opportunity to share my experience as a scuba diver. If you want to know what it really feels like to swim like a fish, <laughs> let's do some imagination with me. Well, first, calm down. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. In, out. In, out. Now, imagine that we are surrounded by grand blue, front, back, left, right, up and down, in every direction. We see profound blue, extending to infinity. The blue is quiet and dreamlike, eternal yet ever changing. Then we find a magnificent manta ray. Is below us, waving its huge fins elegantly, as if carrying us to the palace of the ocean. We look around. Piles of gems are shining below the sunlight. Red, cyan, pink—they are all kinds of corals and small animals. A cute clownfish. Hides behind the animal, peeking at us shyly. Then, the turbulent jackfish storm comes from the front. We rush into the storm. Thousands of jackfish spread out like silk, and then encircle us. We find ourselves to be the eye of the jackfish storm. We are at the center of the ocean. But suddenly. Huge fish nets descend from the sky, overwhelmingly. All the treasures are robbed away. All the colors disappear. We are trapped in a black and white film. There is nothing left. The scene I just described is inspired by my real diving trips in Southeast Asia. I hope my poor language skills convey a bit of the wonderful experience of scuba diving. I love this sport. I got my first scuba diving qualification six years ago. I finished my 100th dive last month. I am attracted by the ocean, which is always tranquil and smooth. In an hour underwater, the only sound I can hear is my breath. Everything. Slows down. I experience extraordinary calm and forget all my worries. Moreover, the unique feeling of weightlessness is fascinating. In water, I escape from gravity and get full control of my body. I can go in every direction I like. I can do any strange pose I want. I can even sit cross-legged upside down. I enjoy unrestricted freedom. However, my diving is not always enjoying. When I do trainings in Shenzhen, the scene I see is just like a black and white film. In this metropolis, the sea is pale. I cannot see colorful corals. I cannot see shoals of fish. I see plastic bottles and beverage cans that shouldn't be there. I see fish trapped by abandoned nets. I see small corals entangled by fishing lines. Not to say the massive fishing industry, 
travelers seeking transient excitement throw gill nets and bombs into the sea. They massacre fish for fun and discard one-time fishing nets into the sea without any worry. Travel companies catch mass amount of fish with trawl nets in order to please the ignorant guests. And no one cares that the seafloor is devastated by trawl nets that destroy everything they pass through. People don't feel guilty as long as they don't see the direct impact of their behaviors. As a scuba diver, I dive down to see the real situation of our Shenzhen seas, to encounter the crisis hidden below gentle waves. I see the rubbish people discard to cheat their conscience, and I see destructive damage caused by unintentional behaviors or ignorance. It's so suffering to see the lovely marine creatures perish before you. Over the years, my diving skills improve. At the same time, I also feel stronger responsibility to protect the local ocean environment, to do something that only I can do. Therefore, in the summer of 2019, I joined Dive Against Debris a global underwater debris data collection program. With a few of my scuba diving friends, I adopted a dive site in Nanao and started to conduct monthly diving surveys. As we dive along Haibei Wan, we pick up rubbish and remove abandoned fishing nets on the way. When we see animals entangled by fishing nets, we cut the strings and try to release them safely. Also, after each dive, we separate the debris into eight categories, record the weight and amount in this table, and then report the data to the Dive Against Debris website. This is me sorting the rubbish after our first diving survey. The program will then collect global data to make this map of marine debris. In the beginning, only four people attended regularly. It's very tiring to clean up fishing nets underwater, carry a heavy rubbish bag to land, and find the correct classification of each piece of debris. There were also huge fishing cages that were too heavy to clean for the four of us. Still, when I entered the debris data into a program website, I was filled with passion again and again as I see the total weight of debris cleaned accumulates step by step, from 10 kg to 50 kg and 200 kg and more. Gradually, our team grows. A non-profit scuba diver organization, Dive for Love, Qian Ai Da Peng, was founded. It recruits skilled scuba divers and organizes various kinds of coral protection activities in Shenzhen. We cooperated with Dive for Love and invited more skilled divers to attend our service in Haibei Wan. We started to propagandize the activity through Dive for Love official accounts to recruit more volunteers. The number of participants in each activity has grown to about 20 including rear service volunteers. We started to hold Dive Against Debris lectures before each survey to teach newcomers about how to pick up rubbish in a safe way without causing damage to the sea or to ourselves. With more participants, we start to deal with larger fishing nets and cages that we couldn't clean in the past. These monthly surveys that were merely in maintained by the passion of four people has grown into a large regular activity, supported by organizations and funding. By now, we have reported the debris data of 19 surveys at Haibei Wan to the global database, with 1,726 debris items collected in total, and the number is always growing. But the number is not the only thing we did. More importantly, we share the underwater scene to the public 
so that more people can actually see what's going on in our Shenzhen cities. We hope that some of them, after seeing the videos and photos, will change their mind about garbage classification, recycling, uh, plastic-free campaigns, or other environment protection campaigns. This year, Dive for Love volunteers wait before coral reefs for weeks just to record the moment of spawning. Their impressive videos are shared by influential newspapers, conveying hope of ocean protection to all Shenzhen citizens. In addition, the data we collect can give researchers and governments more information about the sea, thereby developing environmentally friendly technologies and promoting policy change. Last year, I received an email from the Dive Against Debris organizers thanking me for reporting the data, which they used in a global first research about marine debris distribution. We can also use the data to find out the main cause of debris or identify defects in waste disposal systems. Some people may say, my power is so small compared to all human beings, I myself cannot make a change. I think this is just an excuse for their fear of hardship. As long as you have the determination to do something, just act. There always are changes happen because of your work, sometimes in places you don't see. I acknowledge that it's difficult to stick up with a laborious work that doesn't return corresponding merit immediately. However, it's the people I met in diving service that helped me insist on. I met a graduate student studying oceanography in Shenzhen who attends the activity regularly during her spare time. I met an experienced diver who tried different professions, from a painter to a toy, toy company officer, but finally found scuba instructor to be his favorite job. A student documentary team from Beijing made a documentary of our activity and published it in international movie festivals. Individual diving lovers, full-time employees of non-profit organizations, and people who just sincerely care about the ocean. We have different professions. We are from different cities. But we are united by our same love for the ocean and the determination to protect it. Every one of us has a unique and unforgettable story with the sea. Last month, I left Shenzhen to study abroad. Before I left, I attended uh, our September diving survey. As the lecturer, I introduced the short history of our activity at Haibei Wan to all the volunteers, how we grew from a group of four to the organized and experienced group now. Among the volunteers, some are our old friends, some are new faces filled with hope. It's encouraging to see that after I leave, my friends will continue to conduct monthly diving survey at Happy One. I will not be in your future group photos, but there will be more and more new faces replacing me. This is my story with the sea. I just want to tell everyone that there is a group of people devoting themselves to protecting the sea they love. Thank you very much.